In 2018, Mbappe, Griezmann and Pogba lifted a World Cup. It wasn't only a second World Cup victory for the Bleu, but it exercised the demons of a prior footballing failure and national scandal. The 2010 World Cup. In 2010, the entire country was aghast when the team did something that is, in all honesty, very French. They went on strike. The team then crumbled apart and the entire country began to lambast this group of players. Media, politicians, even former players got involved. But did the players deserve all this criticism? Or was someone else to blame, like say the manager, the football federation, or anybody else? This week, I'm taking a look at what really happened in Kneisna in 2010. The 2010 World Cup kind of brought together all of these phenomena that had in some ways been percolating in French football, really since 19, you know, 1998, obviously. The year is 2010. Barack Obama is president of the US. Kesha is on top of the US music charts. We were introduced to the iPad and there's no global pandemic forcing us to stay inside all the time. And man, I really miss concerts and football games and going outside. In France, the team was hurting after Zidane's retirement and a horrendous showing at Euro 2008, and it wasn't just their performances on the pitch that was a problem. All in all, it was not a team in harmony. Despite having a supremely talented squad with the next Zidane in Gorkouf, Loris, Evra, Enelka, Henri, Ribéry, and so many others, the team needed a playoff win against Ireland. France won, but in dubious circumstances. Thierry Henry blatantly used his hand to control a pass, and then he put in the decisive assist for Galas to score the winning goal. La fameuse main de Thierry Henry, match euh, au Stade de France, il met cette main là et c'est Galas finalement qui marque le but, mais ça fait déjà toute une couverture médiatique qui est très particulière parce que l'équipe de France se fait danser. But this incident meant that the French team was going into 2010 with some bad vibes. But from there, things only got worse. Mais eux, ils ont fait quoi Ils ont recensé des histoires personnelles avant le mondial pour mettre la Zidane. Ils arrivent en Afrique du Sud au mondial avec cette fameuse une après le mauvais parcours, donc elle match nul contre l'Uruguay. Et puis il y a ce 0-0 à la mi-temps face au Mexique et cette altercation dans le vestiaire entre Anelka et Domenech et cette fameuse une de l'équipe qui fait tant parler avec ses, ses insultes publiées en, en gras. Et là, on peut se poser la question du choix. Anelka allegedly snapped back at Domenech, but he denies saying what Domenech claimed. Either way, Anelka found himself on the bench in the second half, right next to Henri. France lost the match, and their World Cup hopes hung by a thread. Anelka was then sent home by the French Federation, which was a big thing, and arguably even an overreaction. Ouais, c'est mort. À partir du moment où ils ont dégagé Nico, c'était mort. But what happened next became even bigger. A team that had struggled to show unity and to play together came together to make a unified front, and they went on strike. Dans ma tête, j'avais la manière dont, euh, dont ils nous ont traités pendant des années. J'avais une icône était en tête, la manière dont ils l'ont fait partir, dont ils l'ont expulsé, dont ils l'ont sali dans la presse. J'avais ça en tête. Parce qu'aujourd'hui, toi, si tu joues au foot dans ton équipe de quartier, si tu es sous avec tes cas, même si tu sais que ton gars, il a tort, tu vas faire quoi Tu vas pas défendre ton gars Faire grève, ne pas sortir du bus à ce moment-là, c'est une image hyper impactante. What was always sort of funny about 2010 is that it was like the most French thing in ever, in a sense, which is like a labor action, right? You know, like it's like, I mean, this is a society in which strikes and slowdowns are, are, are sort of carried out by all kinds of sectors of society. So the idea that the team was doing, you know, what is a kind of relatively mild labor action, actually, which is like to not practice one day, you know, you could sort of say, well, it all got a bit blown out of proportion. Part of it is, of course, people have a hard time seeing soccer players as laborers, given that this group is particularly well paid, but they are laborers. The players decided they wouldn't train in solidarity with Anelka. Quelqu'un comme Nico, c'est quelqu'un très attachant. Quelqu'un, si tu veux lui parler, il est là. C'est pas un gars vicieux, en fait. Et donc, en fait, quand ça arrive, tu dis, waouh, qu'est-ce qui se passe, quoi? Tu vois, c'est genre, euh, tu vois. Donc, on est sûr de ce qu'on veut faire, de lui apporter un soutien. On a forcément été maladroit. Et. Et c'est ce qui a été terrible, quoi. C'était une grosse erreur, mais au final, je ne vois pas comment ça aurait pu être différent, en fait. Je ne vois pas des éléments se désolidariser à ce moment-là, quoi. Et la manière dont ils ont traité Nico, non. Surtout quand tu Nico, il connaît Nico. Nico, il ne parle pas. Nico, il est, il est respectueux, il ne parle pas. Il ne parle jamais. And then came the carnage. The French team was lambasted by seemingly everyone. Ce n'était pas un clash envers une personne, en fait, ou envers ouais. un groupe. C'était juste une solidarité autour d'un élément d'un groupe. Et voilà, c'était pas contre, mais c'était pour ouais. nous. Et c'est là où on a été super maladroit. 
on était dans des conditions qui étaient top, euh, on représente notre pays. C'est pour ça que c'est triste parce qu'en fait, c'était en aucun cas dirigé vers, mais plus pour nous en fait. Even politicians got involved. Henri went to see then French president and now soon to be resident of a French prison, Nicolas Sarkozy. An inquiry was launched by the FFF, the media started to ridicule the team and they started calling the players Rakai. Il y a eu cette stigmatisation, on a parlé de football racaille, de, de football bling bling, euh, d'individualisme, d'égoïsme. Donc euh, il y a eu ce méli-mélo de plusieurs questions profondes qui se sont euh, annexées finalement à, à quelque chose à la base de ce n'était pas grand chose en soi, juste un fiasco sportif. Racaille loosely translates to scum in English, but in France's recent political history, the word has been deviously weaponized, most famously by Sarkozy in 2005, against young people from the French suburbs in a way that has been deemed frighteningly racist and dehumanizing. The Italian team also had a terrible World Cup, but for, for various reasons that didn't become a story about the decline of Italian civilization, right? <laughs> I think what is always the case with the French team, you know, since the 1990s and a little bit earlier, is that there's just no way for it to be not some kind of caught up in the politics in a certain way. So, mediatically, that's one of the first things on the coverture pure journalistic of the one with the critics of sports that have existed at just a title. But it didn't just stop there. This catastrophe at the World Cup had a ripple effect on French society for years to come. Parents started pulling their kids out of football and searching for other activities, basically because they worried about the poor values they thought football taught them. Maybe the most damning thing to come was when Laurent Blanc, the future coach, took over the French national team and he was caught discussing racial quotas with the FFF, saying there were too many black and North African players. And all this was laid at the feet of not the Federation, not Raymond Domenech, but the players. Parler des vrais problèmes de la France, pourquoi vous parlez de nous Il n'y a pas, y a pas, de, y a pas plus, plus de plus gros problèmes à gérer en France Il n'y a, a pas des problèmes de société dont, dont il faut parler Le football a toujours été instrumentalisé politiquement. Il y a beaucoup de différentes façons de critiquer le French team some highly kind of racialized. In fact, a lot of the language used during this period, calling mostly players of color scum, only concerned with money, was discriminatory. Racially, but also in terms of class. Now, it might have been conscious, it might have been subconscious, but that's, that's what was happening. La majorité des joueurs qui évoluent dans le monde professionnel en France viennent des quartiers populaires. Si je dis pas de bêtises, un des chiffres comme ça qui sortait, c'était 80% sont originaires des quartiers populaires. Donc forcément, ils amènent leur culture. Et Médiatiquement parlant, il y a une vraie stigmatisation de la banlieue dans les dans les médias. The young men growing up in those spaces were very racialized in the media, were in regular kind of conflicts with police that sometimes exploded into larger events like what happened in 2005. The thing with the French national team is that it can often be a lens to view larger societal issues. In some ways, what's interesting is the the banality of the thing itself, and then the fact that it became was read as sort of symbolizing a much larger societal crisis to the extent to which the French government gets involved, literally. Est-ce que l'équipe de France est représentative de la société? Elle est représentative d'une frange de la société, d'un fragment de la société qui ne plaît pas forcément à tout le monde ou dans laquelle tout le monde ne se retrouve pas. There are many ways to view this. It can be the Federation's fault for letting a bad atmosphere creep in under Dominic and not replacing him. It can be Dominic's fault for failing to build a cohesive unit and taking the wrong people to 2010 when there were clearly problems at hand. L'épisode Krishna, oui, je pense que ça, ça a mis beaucoup de lumière sur des aspects de, de son management qui n'est pas clair. Et c'est le problème. Ce qui, moi, m'a choqué par rapport à, à Raymond, c'est euh, l'épisode Nicolas Nelka. Ça, c'est insupportable. It could also be the player's fault. Il faut le rappeler, c'est très important. Ça, c'est un truc inédit qui s'est passé. Une équipe qui fait grève. Ça, jamais vu. It could be a mix of all these things to varying degrees, right? It doesn't have to be one or the other. But it seems like large portions of the French media and society at the time laid the blame purely at the feet of these young players. It seemed to me the players had some reasonable grievances. And it is true that in general, you can think that the larger setup of a team is where, to some extent, the responsibility needs to lie. After all, there's 11 players, there's one coach. So if there was a systemic failure or a structural failure, then I think that's what they were trying to call attention to. But it's of, of course much easier to point at Nicola Anelka, <laughs> basically, and say it's, it's all his fault. Yeah.
Now, before I give my thoughts on the 2010 Knesset incident and everything else that emerged from that, I want to take a second to let everyone know that some changes will soon come to Oh My Goals investigations. It'll be the same type of journalism, but with a new set and a new name, Justin's Case. So if you want to make sure to not miss any future episodes of Justin's Case, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. Okay, now here's what I think. 2010 was a perfect storm of issues. There was a lot going on at the time with various social dynamics and dynamics within the team. Was the French team responsible? The atmosphere in the team wasn't incredible. Even Lilian Turam allegedly had spoken out after 2008 about some toxic personalities in that team. But ultimately, for me, the manager is in charge of picking his squad. In 2010, Dominic completely failed to build a cohesive unit. So look, players don't just go on strike. It doesn't happen out of nowhere. Furthermore, the FFF made things worse by overreacting. The manager decides to sideline a player that's fine, but sending him home, that feels excessive. But the reaction from society, the media, and especially politicians was excessive. Did Sarkozy really need to get involved? It feels like he would have had a lot of other things going on at that time. On parlait de président bling bling, Sarkozy. On le retrouve dans le football avec ses joueurs multimillionnaires qui ne pensent qu'à leur gueule, entre guillemets. Et sur la ghettoisation, alors plus que le fait s'il y avait trop de joueurs black ou pas, moi ce qui m'a marqué, c'était par rapport à Gourcuff. Gourcuff Ribéry, il y a eu cette tension, on a parlé de Gourcuff qui était la victime de Ribéry, et tout d'un coup, comme si en équipe de France, il y avait cette ghettoisation, ce communitarisme qui ressortait. That puts huge pressure on players who are in the limelight in a way and who are expected to be navigating incredibly complicated political and cultural currents that are difficult to navigate and who are also just trying to be good at soccer. So that's what I think on a sporting side. But this is obviously open to debate. It's also indicative of deeper societal issues. Karim Benzema may have not been in Kneisna, but he summarized the malaise that surround the French team every time a tournament doesn't go to plan. The way he says it, I think is perfect. If I score, I'm French. If I don't, I'm an Arab. Even Pogba was booed just a few weeks before inspiring his team to a World Cup victory. When France wins the World Cup, it's Black Blanc Beur, and celebrating a multicultural society that is primarily and fundamentally French first. When France loses, questions of character and failure to integrate or assimilate are brought to the forefront and often laid at the feet of players who come from immigrant backgrounds or parents were immigrants or maybe migrated from other overseas territories. For me, integration and assimilation are often loaded terms. There's no tangible target for immigrants to assimilate. And these same terms are often used, as Dubois points out in his book, Soccer Empire, for French citizens born or who have parents born in overseas territories like Guadeloupe and Martinique, for example. C'est un faux débat parce que peu importe l'univers dans lequel on évolue, les sphères sociales dans lesquelles on évolue, c'est toujours la classe dominante qui va imposer sa culture et, et ses codes. Obviously, Nicolas and Elka is not really in any way responsible for whatever large structural issues are going on in France, right? And yet to find a kind of scapegoat and to target them as, as sort of being this thing of the problem. To me, that's always a symptom of a broader sickness or malaise or lack of ability to actually analyze the situation. French citizens can also be more than one thing. Identity isn't binary. You can be French and African or French and Caribbean or Mexican American or a Lebanese French American like me. You don't have to choose just one. It's up to the person to decide the place and culture or places and cultures that they feel connected to. French society needs to shake these stigmas that paint the entirety of the banlieue and the people who live there, a group of people who are predominantly black and brown as scum or lesser or not French. It also needs to stop expecting footballers to solve societal issues related to race and class. Well, football, it's a beautiful thing. Football can be a beautiful instrument that can help unite us. This is a job more suited to politicians though. That's my take. Let me know yours in the comments down below and see you next week.